For today's video, we'll be discussing the different product costing systems. What is cost accounting system used in manufacturing industries for purpose of tracking flow of inventory through various stages of production? So in here, we will be discussing how do products accumulate costs. So basically, there are two costing systems that we will tackle, job order costing and process costing. Now, what's the importance of cost accounting system? First, this is useful for manager for cost control, estimation of cost, profitability analysis, inventory valuation, and the like. It also assists them in checking inventory at each stage. Of course, you need to check your inventory when you manufacture certain products, how many raw materials are still available, how much are in process, and how many products are already finished and can be shipped to your customers. Next, it also helps in cost optimization. One of the factors that we need to understand is that when it comes to manufacturing, you need to lower your cost in order for you to maximize your profit. That is the objective of management accounting. It helps in understanding value of your raw material, work in process, and finished goods. So depending on the costing system that will be used by the company, you will determine what amount of cost contributes a greater portion to your product. Next, it helps in maintaining just-in-time inventory. Just-in-time inventory is one of the costing systems wherein you will just order raw materials when it is going to be used in your production. So in here, you minimize your raw materials inventory. And lastly, it assists in taking decisions without waiting for report. So one of the things that you need to know is that being managers of a manufacturing company, you need to make decisions that are efficient and effective. You need to know what are the essential things that you need to consider in making those decisions because remember, it affects the company as a whole and it also affects the bottom line of your company. Now, what are the costing systems that we will discuss for today? First is we have the job order. And next, we have the process costing. Under job order, basically, it is being used when your products are heterogeneous. When we say heterogeneous, you produce different products depending on what the customer needs. While process costing, you produce homogeneous products. When you say homogeneous, they are alike. The products are the same. In job order, the products are customized to the needs of the customers, what the customer wants. For example, this is the size that he or she needs. This is the color that he or she needs. So you need to fit in to what the customer wants. While for process costing, the products are mass produced, so you do not ask your customers. You produce the product as fast as you can in order for you to have a lot of inventory that you can deliver to your customers. Job order focus on pull demand, so you will not manufacture anything unless there is an order from your customer because remember, it is customized. While on process costing, it is push demand. The concentration is you produce as many as you can regardless if the customer needs it because remember, in here, the focus would be you will supply all your channels of this product so that it will be available in the market in any geographical area that you can identify. In job order, the cost is accumulated per job. So it uses what we call the job cost sheet. For example, if you have two jobs, job number one and job number two, these involves different level or different amount of material, labor, and overhead. So you will create your unit cost per job. So you will compute that one. On the other hand, under process costing, cost is accumulated per department because remember, you produce similar products. How are you going to put costing in your product? It is per department. So, for example, you have three departments. Department A, Department B, and Department C. Each department uses different level of material labor and overhead. So, you accumulate costs that you will add up to your unit cost per department. Let's focus on job costing. What are examples of companies or manufacturing companies that uses job costing? We have your jersey manufacturing companies. We also have your printing shops, the one that you go to when you want to print your tarpaulins, your announcements, your flyers. Of course, remember, they will not produce anything unless you will ask them to do it. And they will do that because there is a demand on your part as a customer. This is an example of a job cost sheet. So as you can see in here, job number 78, then the date initiated. You will also put the date completed and the units completed. 
then who is the supervisor, what is the item we are talking about, then what are the direct materials requested from the warehouse, the, the direct labor used, the manufacturing overhead used. So you put in the detail here and then below, as you can see, there is a cost summary. So this will be used in order for you to get your total cost, then divide it by the number of units completed to get and determine your unit costs. In manufacturing operations, remember the manufacturing cost. It is composed of three. We have direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. So for example, if we manufacture furnitures, what are the direct materials involved? We have your wood, we have your metal. On the other hand, when we say direct labor, these are the people who manufactures or makes those furniture. So you have your laborers, your skilled and unskilled laborers. And lastly, we have your factory overhead. These are minimal in amount. You will also put in here your indirect materials and indirect labor. Example of indirect materials would be the nails that you use in making those tables and chairs the paint, the varnish. So you will also put here your salary of the supervisor because it's indirect labor and other related things that are small in quantity. You classify them or put them under factory overhead. Now, what are the stages of production? So we have raw materials. So when you order metal and wood, of course, these are not yet for sale. Next is for the work in process. These are not yet 100% completed. So when you produce furnitures and tables, they are not yet painted, they are not yet varnished. So then these are work in process. And lastly, finished goods, these are already available for sale. You already incorporated all that are needed in making the product. So finished goods is the last stage of your production. Now, in job order costing, you need to familiarize yourself with the cost of goods sold statement. As much as possible, you need to know the format and the sequence of the items in order for you to compute properly the cost of goods sold. First on the list, of course, is you have your raw materials beginning. So these are the wood, metal, if you manufacture chairs and tables that are still on your warehouse. So these are the remaining materials from the previous period. Then, of course, these are not yet sufficient in making your product for this period to meet the demand. So you need to purchase additional raw materials from your suppliers. So you need to add purchases. But remember, when you order from your suppliers, you will pay for the transportation going to you. So we call that your freight in, you add it there. Then you deduct what we call the PIRAD. These are purchase returns, allowances, and discounts. So for example, the supplier offers discount if you order in bulk then you deduct that purchase returns if there are any defective materials that you ordered of course you need to give it back to your supplier so you also deduct that one then the result will be what we call the raw materials available for use that is the one that you will be using in making your product then you list your raw materials ending the remaining raw materials for the period that are not used into production so you will get what we call the raw materials used. Remember, raw materials is composed of direct and indirect materials. And as we have discussed a while ago, indirect materials go to your factory overhead. So you need to deduct the indirect materials from the total raw materials in order for you to arrive at the direct materials used. Then you add your direct labor, you add the factory overhead in order for you to get your total manufacturing costs. With that, you need to add the work in process beginning to your total manufacturing costs to get your total goods placed into production. You deduct the work in process ending these are the products that were not completed for the period. And the answer would be the cost of goods manufactured. You add your finished goods beginning to get your total goods available for sale to your customer. Then deduct the finished goods ending, the ones which remained in the warehouse that were not sold to your customer in order for you to get your cost of goods sold, also known as your cost of sales. Now, when it comes to factory overhead, there are two things that you need to know. The actual factory overhead and the applied factory overhead. When you say actual, these are needed for accurate determination of income. These are incurred. So you record your actual factory overhead as debit. The references when it comes to actual factory overhead are the receipts, statement of accounts that you receive from your suppliers. On the other hand, when you say apply, these are applied to products using a predetermined rate. So these are estimations when we say apply. These are recorded as a credit to factory overhead. So the entry would be debit work in process, credit applied, factory overhead. Now the question is, 
what factory overhead is added to compute total manufacturing costs. Going back in here, as you can see, direct materials use plus direct labor plus factory overhead is equal to total manufacturing costs. What is this factory overhead that we add among direct labor and direct materials use in order to arrive at total manufacturing costs? Is it applied or is it the actual? The answer would be we use applied factory overhead to compute for the total manufacturing cost. Why? Because remember, we can only know the actual factory overhead at the end of the period. But remember, you need to know already the factory overhead from the start. So you need to estimate it in order for you not to be hampered in your operations. Remember, actual and applied overhead are not always equal to each other. If the actual overhead is greater than the applied, we call it under application of your overhead. And what are we going to do? We adjust it to cost of goods sold as addition because your estimate is lower than the actual incurrence of costs. On the other hand, if the actual is less than the applied, we call it an over application and it is an adjustment to the cost of goods sold as deduction. It means that your estimation is greater than the actual incurrence of the cost. So you need to deduct that because your cost estimation is higher than the actual. So as you can see, you put it here apply. So at the end of the period, your cost of goods sold is not yet the correct cost of goods sold. So you need to adjust that one by adding under applied factory overhead or deducting over applied factory overhead in order for you to arrive at the adjusted cost of good so to end our discussion let us have our thought for the day it is a proverb thought which states that when a habit begins to cost money it's called a hobby i hope you learned something for today good day guys